Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder, I'm Jack Harrington, and on this one we are going to look at Pony Code, which is a VS Code extension that uses AI to build your unit tests for you. It's really cool stuff. So if you are a new novice when it comes to unit testing, not a problem. This is going to teach you how to write your unit test. And if you are a unit test aficionado, then it's going to help you up your unit test coverage that much faster. Now, since we're on the topic of AI and VS Code extensions, let's compare and contrast GitHub's Copilot to PonyCode. They're both free, which is great. PonyCode has the advantage of being available to you today. All you have to do is just install it, whereas GitHub Copilot is actually a waitlist kind of thing. Uh, and then in terms of their focus, because Pony code is so narrowly focused around building unit tests, you don't get the kind of wacky results that people have been showing on Twitter with, you know, weird stuff being generated by get a copilot. You just are getting unit tests and the test data that goes into them. So it's very clearly focused and constrained. All right, before we jump into it, if you like the video at any time, just hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so I'm gonna go in my temp directory and I'm gonna create a pony code test directory. And we're gonna start off with some JS in there. So I'm gonna make a JS test directory and I'll bring up VS Code. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring up that terminal and then I'm gonna go into JS test. And from there, I'm gonna do a yarn init dash Y. And after that, I'm going to add jest as a development dependency. And from there, I'm gonna create a new file called index.js. Now in that, I'm gonna go into module.exports and I'm gonna say, let's say, add two numbers. And with these two numbers, I'm gonna add them together, L1 plus L2, awesome. Now, immediately, since I've got pony code installed, it gives me some options. I can do a pony code unit test, which I'm gonna do by clicking on add two numbers so that it understands that I'm in that function. And I'm gonna click on this pony code unit test. And that's gonna bring up this pony code extension sidebar. So I'm gonna scroll down and see its suggested tests. So all I need to do now is if I wanna have this test that uses zero as the input one and one, negative one as the input two and outputs negative one because it's already actually run the test for me. I can just hit plus and that's gonna add it to my unit test. And then I can actually click on this and open the test file and see how it's all written out. So the first thing it's doing is bringing in our code and then it's describing a test or a set of tests. And then within that you have each test and this is also named and there's each test has a function that runs that test. And it's in this case gonna go and add these two numbers together using our function. And then it's going to expect that the result of that, which is stored as result, is gonna be negative one. So we can actually just run it right here and that's gonna bring up the console and run jest. And it's gonna show us that that test passed. Pretty cool, right? So the next one I'm gonna try is a people name formatter. I'll name that FMT, which makes no sense at all. And then I'll have a function that takes a, a first name and a last name. And then it returns first name and then followed by last name, right? But it, the naming here is terrible, right? FL, FMT, what is that about? So let's see what pony code comes up with for that by clicking first on FMT and then clicking on pony code unit test. And it gives me kind of all these weird values, HSL. So let's, let's put that in there and see what it comes up with in terms of the unit test. Yeah, so it's giving us pretty much two random values. It really doesn't understand what F and L are. I mean, in this case, it does actually run. So we can hit run and it will pass that test. But that's not really what we want. What we want is some kind of like pseudo first and last name that it might generate for us. So let's try it with more appropriate names. I'm going to try get person name and we'll make it a person and we'll turn person dot name and see what that comes up with. All 
And I'm going to select per get person name, hit pony code unit test. Aha, okay, so now it's starting to generate some names. Turns out if you follow great grandma's advice and actually name your variables and functions with reasonable names, it'll go and create reasonable data for you. So again, let's try that plus, and we can go over and we can see that it generated a unit test for us. And we can see that it is made the right call and put in an object, which is great. So it actually is able to do not just base types, but also more complex objects as well. Let's see how it does with asynchronous stuff. So I'm gonna go and make a promise-based call. I'll do uh, async get first name and given a person again, it's going to return person name. All right, it looks pretty good. Let me click on get first name and then pony code unit test again. And in this case, we can actually see that it understands that it's a promise because it will look for rejections. And so let's click on this plus here and see what the test is that it creates. So in this case, we can see that it's automatically generated an async function as opposed to a regular function that it did with the other tests and that it's also awaiting the output of that. And that's because it understands that this is an async function on the other side. You can also do a promise-based function. Let's give that a try. So we'll do a get name with promise. And in this case, we're gonna return a new promise where we resolve person name. So essentially we're doing the same thing as that async function. We're just doing all the work ourselves. So again, we'll click on that, do the pony code unit test. And yep, it understands as well that that is an async function, even though it's not defined as such. Let's go click on over and see that it has generated an async function for us. Nice, okay, cool. So it's async awaiting, that's, that's great, okay. And let's try out a callback. Get my name with a person and then a callback. And we can call back with the person name and we'll see how that works. So let's go have a look at that code. And we can see that in this case, there's a little bit of an issue because the current version of Pony Code doesn't actually support callbacks. It says callback detected, not supported yet. And I actually think that's fine. Honestly, most folks are gonna be using async await and promises and callbacks are pretty retro. So I, I actually think if they are looking at their priority sheet and being like, oh, should we go and do callbacks? I think it's fine for a while if you don't do callbacks, that's okay. Okay, so let's see how it works with TypeScript. I'll go back into my terminal. I will go back up a directory and then I'll copy that JS test into a TS test. All right, let's jump in there. And let's bring over the sidebar and we can see now that we have a TS test directory as well. And I'm going to yarn add TypeScript as well as ty the types for Jest as well as TS test, which is a very nice system that makes it really easy to add just testing to your TypeScript project. All right, once that's done, I'm gonna do MPX and then TS jest and then config init. And that's gonna set up my configuration file for jest. And then I'll close the terminal, go over here. And first off, let's go and change that to index.ts for TypeScript. And let's just go and add some types. So this one is gonna have a name, which is a string. This one's also gonna have a name, which is a string. This, yeah, looks like, <laughs> all right, name is a string. And then finally, this last one also has a name with a string. And then the callback, which will take a name as a string and return a void. Okay, so the next thing to do is change index.test.ts. And then let's just try out one of these tests. 
and that runs just fine. Turns out it's actually just as easy, basically, to run tests on TypeScript as it is on JavaScript. All right, well, if you wanna find out more about PonyCode, be sure to jump on over to their site. It's linked to in the description down below. But in the meantime, of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put them in the comment section down below as well. And if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder comes out. And yes, I am going to shave pretty soon. This is getting really scruffy, yeah.